Yeah, Susan. Yeah, yeah, I know about I know about the report. Oh my god, my dog just ate a flower. I can't believe what I have to do with this. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm well aware of that. I will I will bring it Monday. I think I'm uh, Hi, my name is Uri Takman, and in this video I just... I'm sure everybody knows what the Rose Engine machine is. Uh, in case you don't, it's a machine that makes um, guiloche. After the last video where I've made a copying attachment machine, you can, you can check that, that out. Um, we're gonna make the impossible and build a rose engine. Lathe. That's right, baby. <laughs> uh, you better believe it. Okay, great. So we have a lathe, uh, like a base in a spindle. And now with a set of gears connected to a cam, connected to a cross light, connected to a tool holder, we can make our precious guiloche. Can we for a second appreciate the animation I'm, I'm putting in these videos? <laughs> Look at these gears, they are so delicious. Cool, we have a cross light. Now let's move on to the tool holder. Now the tool holder is quite unique in that it has, aside from a, a holding tools, it also holds a guide. This guide will help control the depth of cut so we have a nice and consistent lines. You dig? There is the handle and a gear, and the gear will act as a ratcheting mechanism. Yeah. Once again, it's not a normal lathe. We're not gonna move the cross light with a simple handle. Instead, we're going to build the ratchet mechanism so we can get a repeatable, mo repeatable movement. So we can get a repeatable movement. Oh yeah. Probably not very accurate. Blah, 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 blah.
We interrupt this program to bring you live from the worst storm in decades. John, how is it out there? Yes, John, I'm standing here outside in what seems to be the worst century, um, the storm in the century. And as a turn of events, there was one guy here that went to get a shish kebab in the middle of the storm. Back to you, John. Thanks, John. But I do believe the man got shish kebabbed. Hello. Hi. When I create something, I'm always into how the things work. But I also ask myself sometimes why they do that. I mean, why they... This curiosity extends beyond my inventions. Exploring different perspectives, shaping our society, deepens my understanding of the world and my role in it. That's why I really resonate with Ground News. They're a small team that I've partnered with that tackles a big problem. How the way we consume information distorts our worldview. They created an app and website that gathers diverse perspectives on the stories shaping our lives so we can compare local and international coverage of global events. By clearly highlighting facts, points of agreement and opposing views, staying informed never been easier. For example, as the war in the Ukraine reaches 1,000 days, more Ukrainians are now leaning towards peace talks with Russia. Ground News shows me key points where news outlets from around the world agree on and where they diverge. Ground News breaks down more of the day's top trending and sometimes polarizing stories like this so readers can easily stay informed without getting lost in a spin. I do believe this is something we really need help with right now. So go to ground.news slash Uri or scan the QR code to check out more daily briefings. For a limited time, we're giving my viewers 50% off Ground News top tier vantage plan, bringing the cost down to $5 a month. I'm sure you'll find Ground News as valuable as I do, so check them out today and let's get back to the video. Slide. Cam. Suspicious dot. I think I wanted to record something. Yes, yes, I remember. I checked the footage and I see I use a micrometer. I just want to tell, I would just want to let you know that 70% of the time that I use a micrometer, it, it's meaningless. That's it. Moving, you can move. You can move on. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. No? Does it make sense? <laughs> One bearing surface is not enough. You know, you always want two, two bearing slides in conjunction. Now, two bearing would be too big, and I think it just needs to carry the load. Okay. 
So, uh, so I'm a little bit. Okay, that seems to work pretty well. <laughs> that seems to work pretty well. Um, you can also do it by hand, which I don't know if we, whatever. Uh, so we need to put here like a gear system. Uh, we need to lift the headstock because it's too short, it's, it's too low at the, at the moment. This goes, this goes, cool. Gears. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk to you about something that is very dear to my heart. It's a finish that I perfected, well, uh, it, it's a finish that I tried to perfect for many years, which is called the master finish. I'm, I'm kidding, it's not just, it's not called the master finish. It's called uh, swirling, I think, and it's very common in the Holzapfel ornamental turners club. Anyway, the reason why I never managed to get it right is because I didn't read online how to do it. Is that there are two different types of swirls needed to be done in order to perfect this type of finish. The first step is to take a piece of charcoal, any charcoal will do except the briskets, they're terrible, they don't work. Using it with a little bit of water, you get the swirling action. Don't leave any place unswirled. The next step is to use a ruby stone and this you need to use very sparsely. Is that the word? And you want to get a nice and consistent type of cursive writing style of uh, scratches. I really love this finish. This is a very lazy, I mean, this is a very great way of masking imperfection and mistakes in the piece. Thank you very much. I've been Ori Tuckman. This is Tonight Show. So many parts. Let's put this all together right now. Okay. Oh wait. Mimi me. Okay, are you ready for this jelly? Let's see. Come on. <laughs> oh, 
Yes. <laughs> Boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. Yep. I replaced the first uh, couple with the gear uh, because there was a bit of belt slippage and now with only one belt uh, it's a little bit stronger it's a bit louder as well and it's also uh, reversed okay here we go Oh, <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, okay. That's pretty good. Uh, it's not the best effect. The cuts can be wider. Unfortunately, it's not there yet. And uh, there's way too much backlash in the system. So as a last attempt, I spent another maybe week or so trying to rebuild the whole machine. I put the pulley in the side of the cam. Don't worry about what exactly that means, but the cam spins 10 times for every spindle revolution. Meaning that now instead of a flowery cam, it's kind of an oval shaped cam, as well as the backlash is now reduced by a factor of 10 essentially. Unfortunately, that solved a couple of things, but introduced other problems, which I'm not gonna get into. I spent several days trying to get the best results and some are better than others. However, this machine needs a little bit more uh, finesse-ness. Um, I think I have to admit some sort of defeat. I thought this was a good idea. Obviously, there's a lot of backlash, but I do understand why most ornamental lays or, or, or rose engine lays are uh, have the cams on the spindle and the spindle star is the, sp the headstock son of a uh, so the headstock does like uh, I don't know what to do uh, I... anyway thank you very much for watching see you guys anyway um, I need to I need, I need to figure this out I need to think what I can do uh, again like uh, always uh, I want to give massive thanks for the patrons for allowing me to fail sometimes <laughs> well I, I it's dying yeah um, thank you yeah see you in the next video